Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this problem. Mr. Shaw throws a squirrel straight up uh, with an initial velocity of 35 meters per second. Once again, this is the problem from uh, the board today that is uh, going to be something similar to what's on your quiz on Tuesday. Quiz Tuesday. So Mr. Shaw throws a squirrel straight up with an initial velocity of 35 meters per second. And this is the information we can really extract from this, that our VYI equals 35 meters per second. Now, the next thing, what is going to pull this down? Well, why doesn't this squirrel just go to the moon? Well, AY, the acceleration due to gravity, gravity is going to pull this back down with a negative 9, let's, a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so we've got that. We've got two things. Now there's actually a third thing. Well, let's look at the first dot. How far up maximum height does the squirrel travel? Well, let's look at this previous worksheet we had. And the thing we should realize, guys, is as an object goes up, its velocity slows down because gravity is pulling it back down. So once it reaches a certain point, it doesn't go up any further. And that's the point where its maximum height takes place. And if we look at this problem right here at maximum height, your velocity is zero. So we can solve for how high up this object goes, this, this uh, poor little squirrel. Up, oh, control Z, let's skip back on our pen. Uh, we're going to go V Y F equals zero meters per second. And this is very important, guys. This is always going to happen. Always at max height. So whenever you guys think max height from now on, maximum height of an object traveling upward, you think your VYF is going to be zero at that point. Uh, let's see if we can get an eraser on this. Let's go make it a proper zero. That's not a proper zero. There we go. That's a good looking zero. Okay. So now, how far up? Well, that's asking for your dy, the distance up, the distance in the y direction. Once again, we'll go back to this worksheet. We'll see we're looking for the distance from where it's released to the maximum height up here. So that's going to be this distance right here. Well, a straight line. Like that. And that would be your dy, a straight up line. Okay. So we're going to start off. dy equals v. dy equals v y i t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so we've got this formula now, and all we just simply have to do is plug in. So we have a 35 meters per second multiplied by my time. Oh my goodness, I don't even have that. Oops, well, we can't use this formula. Let's go back and look for a different formula. Oh, I know which one to use now. VYF squared equals VYI squared plus 2AY. And you're going to use this formula and you're going to solve for the distance. Okay? You guys should be able to do this. This is algebra. Let's move on. That's how you solve for the first one. Okay. Let's look at the sec second bullet point. Find the squirrel's velocity at a dis and displacement after two seconds. So, this one. Once again, we know that our velocity is VYI equal to 35 meters per second. We know AY is going to be our acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And the last thing we know from this one is our time. Our time is going to be equal to 2 seconds. So you can use this formula. It says find the squirrel's velocity this time. We're searching for your final velocity, VYF equals question mark. And the formula I'm going to pull out of my hat is going to be VYF equals v y i plus up oh, to erase this plus a t that's a y a y t okay there we go that's how you solve for your v y f
Uh, let's take a look. Let's look at what's going to happen for your D. Well, displacement, I think we should all know by now uh, what I tried to do before. D equals VYIT plus one half AYT squared. Okay? And that's how you're going to do your second dot. Okay? Now, if Mr. Shaw can drink 100 milliliters of soda per second, and a can contains 35 milliliters of liquid, how many cans of soda can Mr. Shaw drink before the squirrel lands? Well, this is tough. It says Mr. Shaw, and we're going to just call this a rate. This is a rate that Mr. Shaw can drink 100 milliliters per second. Okay? So that's a lot of soda per second. Now, we're trying to figure out how many cans. So um, let's. we're trying to find out the volume. Now remember guys, the volume of one can, one can equals 100 milliliters, okay? And now let's take a look, one last thing at the rate. Rate equals, in this case, volume over time. So we have the rate. We're trying to find the volume. Because once we get the volume, we're going to convert that volume into cans. I know it seems very confusing. So guys, once again, this is what we're going to do. We have the rate. We are trying to find the volume. So we need to find the time. If we have the rate and the time, we can just simply go rate times time will give me volume in this case. And then, once we have that, we can convert that to cans, okay? So you're going to go from this formula to this formula to this formula, okay? So let's find out. The main thing, guys, the main culprit is time. Now, here's the thing, guys. When the squirrel comes back and lands, our squirrel is going to go up, starts here at some position, goes up, and comes back down and lands here. Well, guys, the big thing to realize is that it's going to land at the same place it's returned, or it's going to return to the same place that it was thrown from where it started. So once again, if you return to the same place you started, your displacement, your dy, is going to be zero meters. So this is going to give us some very interesting things. Now our vyi, we've been saying this over and over again, is going to be uh, 35 meters per second. And then our AY, the gravity that pulls it back down, is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So we have got these three things, the main thing we need to solve for time. Now, what formula are we going to use? Well, once again, Mr. Shaw is going to reach deep into his bin of formulas. Now we have D, we have VY, we have AY. We're going to be looking for time up here. So what I'm going to choose is this. dy equals vyi t plus one half a y t squared. OK? So now, once we get to this, the only thing we need to do is just plug in. And we're going to get some interesting answers. You're, we're going to get really pissed off at first. So we're going to have 0 meters equals 35 meters per second. I'll put my parentheses around this. Multiply by time plus one half negative 9.81 meters per second squared t squared. Okay, so this is just zero. And in fact, we're gonna later just remove the unit from this. So we're just gonna have a zero on there. So I'm just gonna say zero equals. 35 meters per second times time plus 4 or negative 4.905 meters per second squared t squared. Okay, now we'll see that these both have a common term. That common term is t. So I'm going to divide it by t. I'm going to pull a t out. And you'll see, guys, this is going to look kind of strange. But when you divide it by t, what you end up getting is this. You're going to divide by t because I'm going to pull it outside. I'm going to make a, a, a uh, put a bracket around this and pull, pull a t outside. So I'm going to get 35 
meters per second. Let me just read, read you all this. I'm going to get 35 meters per second. Now my t is gone because I pulled it outside when I divided plus, let me make my plus a little better, plus negative 4.905 meters per second squared multiplied by t. And I'm going to pull, do you see this last bracket that goes all around all this? Multiplied by t equals 0. And so we have to look at what would cause this formula here to be 0. Well, the first thing you'll see, guys, is this, is that one easy way to make this 0 and I'm deleting some things as I talk right now just so I have more space to do work. Uh, one way to make this 0 is to set this time right here equal to 0. If this time is 0, just imagine this is a value x. This, everything within this parenthesis is x. So this whole thing is x. Anything times t, anything, whatever's in your parentheses, let's just call it, oh, son of a gun, anything inside this parentheses times t. If you make t 0, it's going to cancel out and it's going to be 0. So first off, time, your object, what this says is this, your object will have a displacement at 0 at time 0. Well, that makes sense. Right now, the squirrel is in Mr. Shaw's hand, and he's about to throw it. So that makes should make sense to you when you think of it as in the story. So once again, the story begins with Mr. Shaw's, the squirrel in Mr. Shaw's hand. And we're going to say that that's the origin. So even though the squirrel returns to its origin, we're going to find another time. So let's get rid of this time out here now. And oh, let's not do that. It's just going to highlight everything. No, it's not. I'm going to work upward right now. And this may seem weird, but we usually work down. So now, guys, ignore this. This That, that t is now removed because I said it was zero, 0. That's one of your roots. Let's solve for another root. And what we have is this 0 equals 35 meters per second minus, I'm just going to be making minus, it's not a big deal, guys, 905 meters per second squared. And this is multiplied by time. Well, what we could do is we could move this over to the other side. You get 4.905 meters per second times time equals 35 meters per second. And what you should easily see to do is that you're going to divide both sides by this, and that will get your other time. So I'm just going to simplify it. You guys are going to have to do the math yourself on the, ex on the quiz on Tuesday. So you should get the time near 7 seconds, something roughly about 7 seconds. So here's what we'll do. We have to come back up here. I'm just going to delete some things to give myself some space. Okay, so here we are. We have this formula. We know my rate's 100 milliliters per second, and I just solved that my time is about 7 seconds. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug it into the formula. My rate, which is 100 milliliters per second, equals the volume I'm going to drink of, of soda uh, over 7 seconds. So basically, you realize I'm going to get 700 milliliters as my volume. I've just multiplied both sides by 7. Now, remember, guys, what I said at the very beginning, one can is 355 uh, milliliters. And so basically, what we're going to do is this. We know that one can, ah, sorry, let's pick another color just to differentiate. One can equals 355 milliliters, oh, sorry, milliliters. So what that means is this, if I have 700 milliliters, I'm going to use want over have, what do I want? That's one can or cans, and what I'm going to have is 355, sorry, 355 uh, milliliters. So when I divide, the milliliters cancel out. And I should be somewhere roughly about two cans of soda. So Mr. Shaw is able to drink two cans of soda before the squirrel hits or lands safely on the ground.